How to Name Chemicals Made Easy, brought to you by Ketsbook. Welcome back and thanks to all my subscribers and patrons out there for making this video possible. In this video, we're going to learn how to name binary compounds. A binary compound is a chemical that is made of two different elements, so naming binary compounds is really the first step in learning how to name any chemical. This video will cover how to name simple ionic compounds, multivalent ionic compounds, and simple covalent compounds. However, it will not cover polyatomic ions or organic compounds. I will cover those topics in subsequent videos. Let's start out by looking at two common examples. CaCl2, which is calcium chloride, and CO2, which is carbon dioxide. In these examples and in general, the more metallic or less electronegative element is written first, and the less metallic or more electronegative element is written second. This is true for both the chemical name and the chemical formula. You can determine the metallic nature of an element by looking at the periodic table. In this periodic table, metals are red, nonmetals are blue, and metalloids are purple. As you move toward the metals, that is, as you move down and to the left, the elements become more metallic. In the case of calcium chloride, calcium is a metal and chlorine is a nonmetal, so calcium is written first. However, in the case of carbon dioxide, both carbon and oxygen are nonmetals. But because carbon is to the left of oxygen, it is more metallic than oxygen. Remember, as you move down and to the left, elements become more metallic, so carbon is written first and then oxygen. There are a few other things that we should learn from our examples. First of all, the first element's name remains unchanged, while the ending of the second element changes to "-ide". This is true for both ionic and covalent compounds. We can see that calcium and carbon are the same, but chlorine changed into chloride and oxygen changed into oxide. Also, we notice that there is a di prefix in front of oxide, which corresponds to the 2 in CO2. However, calcium chloride, which also has a 2 in the formula, does not have a di prefix. Why is that? Because calcium chloride is ionic and carbon dioxide is covalent. Ionic and covalent compounds are named differently, so the first thing you need to do when naming compounds is to figure out whether the compound is ionic or covalent. Ionic compounds are typically made of a metal and a nonmetal, just like calcium chloride, while covalent compounds are composed of only nonmetals or metalloids, just like carbon dioxide. Ionic compounds do not use prefixes, but covalent compounds do use prefixes to indicate the numbers in the formula. Let's focus on covalent compounds for a minute. The most common prefixes for covalent compounds are written here. If they are unfamiliar to you, you should memorize them. Before we look at any more examples, we should notice that the mono prefix for 1 is not used for the first element. CO2 is not monocarbon dioxide, but simply carbon dioxide. In the same way, BF3 is boron trifluoride. The mono prefix is not used for the first element. However, mono is used for the second element. For example, N2O is dinitrogen monoxide. In that case, there is a prefix for both elements. Notice also that the mono lost its last O. It is not dinitrogen monooxide. In general, an A or O at the end of a prefix will be dropped if followed by oxygen. So, P2O4 is diphosphorus tetroxide, not diphosphorus tetraoxide, because the A is dropped. Let's try a couple more. How would you name B2S3? Yes, diboron trisulfide. And what is the formula of arsenic pentachloride? That's right, ASCl5. As long as you know the prefixes, you can name any binary covalent compound. But what about ionic compounds? Remember that CaCl2 is simply calcium chloride. In general, ionic compounds do not use prefixes. That means that Li3N is simply lithium nitride, and Al2S3 is simply aluminum sulfide. But how can you figure out the formula from the name without prefixes? We can use the octet rule. The octet rule basically states that main group elements tend to gain or lose electrons in order to have the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas, which is typically eight valence electrons. So when forming ionic compounds, elements with one, two, or three valence electrons will lose all their valence electrons, giving elements in column one a positive one charge, elements in column two a positive two charge, and then skipping the transition elements, aluminum forms ions with a positive three charge. Carbon has four valence electrons and generally does not form single atom ions, so we will skip the carbon column. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so it will gain three electrons to become like neon and have eight valence electrons. Because electrons are negatively charged, those three electrons will give nitrogen a negative three charge. Similarly, oxide has a negative two charge and fluoride has a negative one charge. 
In general, all elements within a column will form the same charge ions unless you cross the metalloid staircase. Let's try some examples. What is the formula of magnesium fluoride? Magnesium in column 2 typically forms positive 2 ions, and when you write the formula of the ion, it should be Mg2+, not Mg2. Fluoride is in the next to last column, so it should have a negative 1 charge, which we write as simply F-, not as F-1 or F1-. So how do the charges lead us to the formula? Well, all compounds need to be neutral, so we need to balance the charges of the ions. In this case, magnesium has a positive 2 charge, but fluoride is only negative 1, so we need 2 fluorides for every 1 magnesium in order to have an overall charge of 0. That means that the formula of magnesium fluoride is MgF2. No subscript after Mg means that there is only 1 magnesium in the formula, and the 2 after the F means that there are 2 fluorides in the formula. Now let's pause and think about how the formula of the compound is related to the charges of the ions. Notice how the 2 charge of magnesium becomes the subscript of fluorine, and notice how the 1 charge of fluoride becomes the implied 1 subscript of magnesium. This is a general principle. The magnitude of one ion's charge becomes a subscript of the other element. Let's try a couple examples. What is the formula of aluminum oxide? Aluminum ions have a positive 3 charge, and oxide ions have a negative 2 charge. That means the formula of aluminum oxide is Al2, the 2 comes from the oxide's charge, O3, and 3 comes from aluminum's charge. Let's try one more. What is the formula of calcium sulfide? Calcium ions have a positive 2 charge, and sulfide, just like oxide, has a negative 2 charge. That means the formula of calcium sulfide should be Ca2S2. However, keep in mind that those subscripts tell you the ratio of the ions. So this formula means that calcium and sulfur are in a 2 to 2 ratio. A 2 to 2 ratio, of course, is the same as a 1 to 1 ratio, and for ionic compounds, and only ionic compounds, we should reduce the ratio to the smallest whole numbers. So the formula of calcium sulfide is simply CAS. Okay, we're almost done with how to name binary compounds, but what about all those metals in the middle of the periodic table? It turns out that they do not follow the octet rule, and most of them can form more than one different stable ion. Therefore, we will call them multivalent ions. For example, iron can form positive 2 or positive 3 ions. When combined with chloride, for example, the iron 2 ions make FeCl2, and the iron 3 ions make FeCl3. So what do you call those compounds? They cannot both be called iron chloride. You might be tempted to name them with covalent prefixes, like iron dichloride, but that would be wrong. Instead, multivalent ionic compounds are named using Roman numerals for the charge of the metal. So FeCl2 is called iron 2 chloride, and FeCl3 is called iron 3 chloride. Remember that the Roman numerals indicate the positive charge of the metal ion, not any number in the formula. Just in case you're not familiar with Roman numerals, here's a list of the ones you need for naming chemicals. Let's try a few examples. What is the formula of copper 1 phosphide? First, we write down the ions. From its name, we know that copper 1 has a positive 1 charge, so that's Cu+. Phosphorus has 5 valence electrons, so it will gain 3 electrons to make phosphide, which is P3-. Next, we can just switch the 3 and the 1, so the formula is Cu3P. Going from the formula to the name is a little harder. What is the name of CrBr3? Because we don't know the charge of chromium in this compound, it is important to first calculate the total negative charge of the anions. Bromine is a halogen in the next to last column of the periodic table, so bromide has a negative 1 charge. The 3 after Br means that there are 3 bromides in the formula, so the total charge of the anions is negative 3. That means that the total charge of the cations must be positive 3 in order to balance the charge. Since there is only one chromium in the formula, its charge is positive 3. That means that the name of CrBr3 is chromium 3 bromide. Remember that the Roman numeral 3 refers to the charge of chromium, not the number of bromides in the formula. Now, anytime you learn something new, you really need to practice it to make it your own. So I'm going to give you three chemicals, and I want you to try to name them. I also want you to determine the formula of a binary compound of iodine and barium. I'll even give you the periodic table to help you out. Please pause the video now and solve these problems using everything you learned in this video. Alright, now for the answers. Before you begin, you first need to determine what type of compound each one is. 
The first compound is an alkali metal and a nonmetal, so it is a simple ionic compound that obeys the octet rule. Keep in mind that the metals which obey the octet rule are primarily the ones in the first two columns and aluminum. Nearly all the other metals are multivalent. Since Li3N is a simple ionic compound that obeys the octet rule, it should not have any prefixes or Roman numerals. Its name is simply lithium nitride. The second compound is composed of two nonmetals, so it's a covalent compound. That means its name uses prefixes for subscripts, so its name is carbon tetrachloride. Remember that the mono prefix is not used for the first element. The third compound is a transition metal and a nonmetal, so it is a multivalent ionic compound. In order to figure out the charge of the manganese, we need to calculate the total charge of the anions. Oxygen, with six valence electrons, gains two electrons to form O2 minus, and there are two oxides in the formula. Remember the subscript 2 in MnO2 means there are two oxides for every one manganese. If we add up the charges of the anions, we get negative 2 plus negative 2 equals negative 4, and to balance that, the cations must have a positive 4 charge. Since there is only one manganese, its charge must be positive 4. Therefore, its name is manganese 4 oxide. The last compound is a nonmetal and an alkaline earth metal, so it's another simple ionic compound. Iodide, like all halides, has a negative 1 charge, and barium in the second column has a positive 2 charge. You may at first think that the formula would be I2Ba, but that is incorrect because the cation, or the more metallic element, should be written first. So the formula is BaI2, and the name of the compound is barium iodide. Thanks so much for watching the entire video. If you found it helpful, please like, subscribe, or check me out at ketsbook.com. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to share them below, and have a wonderful day.